There is an artificial island being built right now that will power 3 million homes. It's being built by the country who built the world's first wind farm. And frankly, my friends, this kind of thing will be replicated all around the world because it is absolutely amazing. Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. I'm so excited to bring you this report showing you the future of clean energy. And it is an amazing future, which honestly, I'm so excited to be part of. I'm so excited because this is going to change. This here changes the rest of the world in so many ways. What does it mean? The legacy we leave behind to our children rather than just trashing the planet. Actually, it's looking better every day. Denmark, the nation that built the world's first offshore wind farm, has agreed to an ambition for another world first, an energy island in the North Sea, which will eventually be capable of supplying energy to a history making 10 million homes. The move will create a critical boost to the world's offshore wind capacity as well. The first hub and spoke energy scheme will involve building an island 80 kilometers off the Danish coastline to act as the transmission center for hundreds of wind turbines surrounding it. At $34 billion, it's the largest construction project in Danish history. The project is also a potential blueprint for other coastal nations to develop their own green energy sources, and I think it'll be replicated by many countries all over the world. It's in Danish waters, yes, but it could be conceptually used in any other country said Peter Larson of the North Sea Wind Power Hub program. This is an energy hub for the world. The initial phase for the artificial island is around the size of 18 soccer pitches. Initially, the North Sea Hub will be capable of producing 3 gigawatts of electricity, but the plan is to scale to 10 gigawatts, which is nearly one and a half times Denmark's current needs. So Denmark is going to have this offshore wind farm, with this artificial island, which will provide Denmark with one and a half times more power than it needs. What were you saying about there not being enough electricity for electric cars? Yes, this is a game changer because it shows other countries how to do it. It's actually not that difficult. As well as supplying other European countries with electricity, the goal is to use the new offshore island to produce green hydrogen from seawater as well, which can also be exported. Large batteries on the island will store surplus energy for use when demand is high. Although the Danish government will own a majority stake, private companies will be invited to join a public-private partnership to build the project. Power will be supplied by as many as 600 giant wind turbines, each standing around 260 metres tall. Now, these efforts are key given new climate first commitments from countries around the world. I think Denmark is leading. They've just shown us how we can actually become energy independent. I mean, Denmark is putting themselves in position to export massive amounts of renewable energy around Europe and provide all of its own energy needs simply from the wind alone. As Reuters reported, the European Union intends to depend entirely on renewable energy by 2031. That's only around eight years away. Increasing their energy capacity 25 fold by 2050. What does that mean? Superpower, baby. No, seriously. As Tony Sieber said, the world will have a superpower amount of energy. That means surplus energy constantly. It's going to be hard to imagine. Considering the situation we're in right now, it's very difficult to imagine, but it's actually true. Offshore wind installations saw a slight dip in the mid-2000s, but they have been growing ever since with the technological renaissance. In fact, 2020 saw record-breaking financial investments into offshore wind, according to new data from the Renewables Consulting Group. Scaling up while holding hands. Sounds strange, but the scaling up of onshore wind should be the catalyst for other ocean-based economic activities worldwide, according to Thomas Thune Anderson, chairman of Danish green energy company Orsted, 
which built the Vindaby Wind Farm. Never heard of the Vindaby Offshore Wind Farm? Well, this offshore wind farm was the first offshore wind farm in the world. It was erected all the way back in 1991, 31 years ago, off the coast of the town of Vindaby off the, on the Danish island of Lokland. It was decommissioned for cost reasons in 2017, after 25 years of useful life. Now, this wind farm actually started its operation back in 1991 and cost only around 10 million euros. It was built by SEAS and Elcraft. The 11 turbines were erected in only 11 days, and the electricity industry at the time generally considered offshore turbines to be ludicrous. They mocked them, they said they wouldn't work, as they must operate in salty conditions and have much smaller output than central power plants. The skeptical attitude changed only six years later as offshore winds drove more energy production than those on land. So this first offshore wind plant really set the world in motion to what we have now today, which is the recognition that offshore wind is the most efficient form of electricity. Setting up wind farms does have an impact on the local environment, said Thomas Thune Anderson at the World Economic Forum's 2021 Davos Agenda virtual event. But it's also an opportunity to do other things. There is a need to set ambitions high. When it comes to offshore renewable energy, Anderson said, and to enable other activities in the same area, such as mariculture. Governments, NGOs, and businesses all need to hold hands in order to do this. He said, we have seen very good examples already of seaweed farming, talking to fishermen about how do we optimize that, how we build reefs, and how we create other kinds of nurseries for fish. It's one of the big advantages of offshore wind farms that people are not aware of. They can be really, really perfect places for building reefs and creating nurseries for fish. In fact, in many locations, there's been a huge revival of local fish stocks around wind farms. Anderson is one of more than 65 global leaders from business, civil society, international organizations, science and technology who comprise the Friends of Ocean Action. That's an initiative convened by the forum to fast track solutions to the most pressing challenges facing our oceans today. As you can see by the lead that Denmark is taking here, it really is possible for the entire world to power all of its energy needs purely through renewable energy. Keep in mind, the cost of solar is now cheaper than the cheapest coal, cheaper than the cheapest coal worldwide. That trend is only accelerating as solar power continues to decrease in price and coal continues to become more and more expensive. Now, remember, a recent study showed that solar panel outputs exceed energy input by 100 times. So yes, solar and wind together along with battery technology, are the perfect solution to making the world a much more beautiful place to live in and also to staving off global warming as well. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.